Okay, so we've been talking a lot about diffusion, and in order to understand why diffusion is important, it really helps us to understand the types of molecules that are used um, in diffusion and that get diffused from one cell, or I guess between cells or within cells. So there are certain categories of macromolecules, or very large molecules, that are considered very important. So, um, first of all, macromolecules are giant molecules that are made of many, many smaller molecules. But even though they are macro, which means very large, they are still microscopic molecules, so we still would need a microscope to be able to see them or use a technique to separate them. So the first type of macromolecule that we're going to talk about is a carbohydrate. Carbohydrates are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and always in a one to two to one ratio. Okay. They include things like starches and simple sugars. Okay, the most common carbohydrate that we talk about in this class is glucose, which is C6H12O6. So if you look here, these are in this 1 to 2 to 1 ratio, because if you were to reduce 6, 12, and 6, you would get 1 to 2 to 1. Right? Lipids are another type of um, macromolecule. Mm. Okay. So let's see what I can do here. Okay, so lipid molecules are made up of carbon and hydrogen, as well as fatty acids. They include your fats, your waxes, and your oils. Your saturated fats are going to be solid at room temperature, so those are things like butter, for example, or lard, or bacon grease that is cooled. And unsaturated fats are going to be liquid at room temperature. So those are things like your oils, like vegetable oil or canola oil, um, mostly things like vegetable canola oil, olive oil, different types of cooking oils. So carbohydrates are a great source of energy for living things, um, but so are fats, actually. They are a tremendous source of energy. They can produce more energy than carbohydrates can. It just takes the body longer to process them. And your lipids are very important because they are found in your cell membranes. Um, remember, you've got that phospholipid bilayer. So without lipids, we wouldn't be able to have um, we wouldn't be able to have membranes actually. Okay, the other two types of macromolecules that we're going to look at this year are nucleic acids. Those include DNA and RNA, um, and those are responsible for storing and transmitting genetic information. So. We talked about DNA a little bit earlier in the year, and we are going to talk about RNA because it plays a huge role in protein synthesis. Um, and our DNA and our, oh, I'm not sure how to get rid of that. Our nucleic acids are made up of um, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and phosphorus. So on your Regents exam, a lot of times they'll ask you what molecules are responsible for life. And you can remember that by remembering the word chan. Chan like chomp, but chan with an N. So carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus. And the reason we put them in this order is because carbon is the highest in relative abundance, meaning the majority of you is made up of carbon, and then hydrogen, and then oxygen, and then nitrogen, and the smallest percentage of you is phosphorus. So I want you all to repeat chan, which stands for carbon. Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus. Okay, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus. Go ahead and repeat that. Good. What I want you to do tonight is go home and go to your sibling, your parent, your guardian, your best friend, I don't care. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus. And they'll be like, what are you talking about? And then you have to tell them that that's the relative abundance of elements in all living things. Carbon is the greatest and phosphorus is the so this is an important, important, important piece of information right here. And then finally, we're going to talk about proteins. Proteins are made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. And they are so important because without proteins, we would not be able to survive. Proteins carry, um, they're like the workhorses. They do everything. So when we're talking about photosynthesis or digestion or 
we're talking about getting rid of wastes. Proteins are the molecules that make all of that happen. So enzymes are important because they control the rate of reaction. Hormones carry messages to specific tissues in the endocrine system from glands. Antibodies are what help us to fight off pathogens, and a pathogen is just anything that's going to try to make you sick. Um, and then there are structural proteins, which form bones, muscles, things like that, um, your hair, keratin, and your fingernails. And then we have neurotransmitters, which also um, are messengers. They are what help our nerve cells or our neurons communicate with one another. So we're going to talk about all of those um, coming up in greater detail this year. Um, and I also have a really easy way for you guys to remember the types of proteins, and we're going to talk about that coming up soon. I think probably tomorrow, since tomorrow is Friday. Uh, okay, so what's important to know about proteins is that they are made up of 20 different um, molecules, and those particular molecules are called amino acids. And it's your DNA that determines the arrangement of those amino acids, and it's the arrangement of those amino acids that determines um, your protein and the structure of the protein. So there are a couple of words that you need to know in conjunction with this. So first of all, um, you might see the words monosaccharide or polysaccharide. A saccharide, uh-oh, sorry. A, a saccharide is just a sugar. So if it says mono, it's talking about one molecule of sugar. Polysaccharide is many of these smaller molecules of sugar put together. Um, saturated fats mean that they have no bonds that are available to be broken. So once you eat a saturated fat, it's just going to kind of, um, it will, it's more likely to be stored rather than used for energy than an unsaturated fat, which has bonds that can be broken. And then your RNA stands for ribonucleic acid and DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So that, my friends, is a quick, I don't know, low down on macromolecules, I guess, which you will be expected to know for your exam on Wednesday.